And as you know, better than I do is going as far as banning of books. I mean, that's reminiscent, I'm afraid, of Nazi Germany. Uh, the, uh, when you start banning books of uh, Chicano history, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rethinking Columbus uh, mm -hmm. classics and so on, well, it's an international disgrace. Any other questions? So, what do you think of uh, the connection between um, talking about corporations on the border? What are some of the connections you see in Arizona and other states of corporations colluding with uh, legislature to create some regressive policy? To create regressive policy? Well, you know, unfortunately, that's the way American politics works, I and mean, that's for a long time. I mean, the, uh, it's a formally democratic society. But the role of uh, concentrated wealth, corporate wealth particularly, in influencing and directing policy has always been substantial. And in the past 30 years, has just gone out of sight. Um, there's a big change in the American economy back in the 1970s, a major shift from uh, uh, production for use here to offshoring of production and the financialization of the economy. Now that set in motion processes, a kind of a vicious cycle of processes, which has led to an extraordinary concentration of wealth in the top fraction of 1% of the population. Concentration of wealth yields concentration of political power almost automatically. Now that yields legislation which carries the cycle further. And we've reached a, a pretty dangerous situation. So you've got a, a very good evidence that uh, campaign funding alone is a pretty good predictor of uh, government policy. Uh, Thomas Ferguson, political economist, is the person who's done the major work on that. And that, his work goes back a century. But in recent years, it's just become a farce. I mean, take a look at the current uh, Republican campaign debates, which incidentally are just, the world can't believe what they're seeing. If, if you go to the foreign press and you travel abroad, uh, there's a sense that the country's just going off, off its rocker. But uh, uh, the, uh, uh, just this morning, in fact, uh, Obama announced that he's also going to have a super PAC so they can pour huge amounts of money into you know, slanders and lies about opponents and so on. It's, it's become kind of a farce, especially since it isn't united. But it goes back a long time. And it's inherent in a, uh, you know, a, a, a social system in which uh, uh, wealth and hence power is highly unequally uh, distributed by now, radically unequal, much worse now than before. So sure, corporations and legislatures cooperate all the time. But one of the reasons why the right wing wants to, uh, you know, are passionate about the Tenth Amendment is not because they're constitutional originalists, the Constitution, uh, but they know perfectly well that uh, states are easier to control than the federal government. So if you can devolve decision-making power to the state, the corporation is going to be far more powerful even than they are now. The federal government you knows some sort of uh, barrier to total corporate control. But when you get things down to the states, the small states can't, uh, much more corrupt. There's plenty of corruption in the federal government, but much more in the states, even more in the towns, because they're just weaker and smaller. So if you devolve authority, fine, you have a clear route. Someone's taking their last question for me. What do you think of what's going on in Spain with uh, human rights magistrate, really, uh, Baltasar? With and how Baltasar, the, the human rights uh, magistrate that uh, prosecuted Pinochet, and that oh, now he's not. being tried yeah. because he's violating the amnesty law that, yeah. and he wants investigation. How do you see that? And do you see that as a possibility for, you know, um, being expanded elsewhere, like, you know, some of us around here, or, you know? Um, Remember that. If, uh, I don't want a lot of time to talk about it, but I suggest that you look up a recent work by Vincent Navarro. Uh, you can find it on the web. 
he's a professor at Johns Hopkins, Spanish originally, and anti-fascist exile. And he's been writing about this recently, giving the background. Uh, what's happening, for those of you who don't know, is that uh, there was a kind of a real crusading uh, uh, Spanish judge who was extending universal jurisdiction principles, which exist, but nobody applies them, uh, the ability to, to uh, try uh, people for major human rights abuses anywhere, not just in the place where they committed them. Uh, the famous case was Pinochet, uh, the dictator who was uh, installed, uh, incidentally, by the United States on what in Latin America is called the first 9-11, 9-11, uh, 1973. Uh, which by any standards and any dimensions was much more severe than what we call 9-11, uh, both in its uh, immediate costs and its international consequences. Anyhow, the democratic uh, the government of Chile was overthrown, a uh, brutal, vicious dictatorship was introduced, a uh, major international terror center was set up, carried out terror all over the continent, even in Europe, uh, and. Uh, Finally, uh, Ed Garzon uh, went after the dictator and had him uh, ultimately tried. And he's, uh, he, he has done several things of that kind. Uh, what, uh, uh, he is now under trial himself. And the reason is that he turned his attention to Spain. He turned his attention to the criminals in Spain who were <coughs> carrying out horrendous atrocities under the Franco dictatorship. And when you get close to home, uh, the bars start coming down pretty fast. And that's true here, too. That's why nobody's being uh, even contemplated the, any trials for the uh, crimes of the Bush administration or the Obama administration can't do it, or even worse ones in the past, and much worse ones. Uh, so Garzon started looking at the uh, crimes under Franco, which is not that far back. Franco dictatorship goes to the mid-70s. And then he began running into the establishment, you know, the major Spanish establishment. And they reacted sharply, as you'd expect, partly because Spain has never really extricated itself from the structure of the dictatorship. It takes time. Same is true in Chile. In Chile, it's uh, and they've had about 20 years of the formal democracy, but you can just feel the structure of the dictatorship everywhere. People are afraid and so on. Now that's why it's like going back to the first question. This is a great student movement in Chile, which is finally breaking the barriers on this. Now they're one of the most important in the world. Uh, but it's, and in Spain it hasn't. There's also been a, a youth movement in Spain, the Indignados, but, uh, which are kind of breaking down the structures of the dictatorship, but they're still there. And as soon as Garzon got to uh, Spanish crimes, uh, the roof fell in. Now, he's under indictment. Uh, I should say that some of the things that go on in Spain are mind-boggling. Uh, so, for example, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a national uh, uh, academy of, uh, I don't know, biography or something like that, a major document. They recently came out with a, a, a scholarly uh, uh, volume of uh, biographies of major figures, you know, serious scholarship, National Academy. You take a look at it, take a look at Franco, at the entry under Franco. He's described as a conservative nationalist, uh, but did, did a few things that weren't so wonderful, like maybe killing 100,000 people or so, but uh, that's not mentioned. But he was basically a decent conservative nationalist. And there was a criminal in those two days, Negrin, uh, the head of the Republican government, uh, but uh, was defeated in the Franco in the Civil War. So he's the criminal, uh, and the Franco was like a conservative nationalist who was supposed to honor and respect. Well, these are the kinds of things that that happen. We shouldn't uh, look at them with such too much disdain. Uh, for example, if you read publications that come out of the Hoover Institute in Stanford, you know, major 
supposedly scholarly institute in the Stanford campus, uh, you can read publications which tell us how lucky we are because there's a colossal figure who hovers over us like a warm and friendly ghost. Uh, this is not North Korea, incidentally. This is the United States, and they're referring to Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. one of the major killers and murderers of the modern period. Uh, supported apartheid South Africa, he carried out major atrocities in Central America, he, uh, uh, in the Middle East, supported Israel's invasion of Lebanon, and killed 20,000 people. He was the strongest supporter of the Argentine dictatorship, which was the worst of the horrible Argentine dictatorships, but he hovers over us like a warm and friendly ghost and that's coming out of Stanford University. So, before we start throwing stones at other people, it's useful to look into a mirror as well. Uh, the, uh, but that's what's going on with Garzon, and it's really shocking. Thank you for your time, everyone.